When you stand in the grounds at any one of our amazing zoos at Werribee, Healesville or here at Melbourne Zoo, if you close your eyes and just listen, you're going to hear birds. You're going to hear lorikeets, you're going to hear seagulls, you're going to hear all kinds of birds. And birds are just right around us all the time. They're part of what makes living in Australia so special. But unfortunately, not all of them are doing super well. So come inside with me and let's go find Kim, who's going to tell us about one of the cutest little birds that has incredible challenges and really needs all our help and support. Joining me is Kim Miller. Kim, welcome. Hi. <laughs> and you're actually, you've come all the way down from Hillsville Sanctuary where that's where your current job is? Yep, absolutely. I am the Manager of Conservation and Research at Hillsville Sanctuary. That sounds like a fabulous title. What does the Manager of Conservation and Research at Hillsville Sanctuary do? So I manage a team of keepers and at the same time I look after all of our breeding programs for fighting extinction species. So there's 10 of those programs based at Hillsville Sanctuary. The species we're going to be talking about today is a bird. A really little bird, really remarkable, the orange-bellied parrot. Let's share with everyone a little bit about this bird. So orange-bellied parrots are certainly one of those species that is right on the brink and has been for a very long time. So they are a very small bird, they only weigh about 45 grams and they are a migratory species. So they undertake about 700 kilometers of migration every year. They fly from the southwest of Tasmania all the way up to the mainland in Victoria and South Australia each winter and they spend their winters on the mainland and then fly back to Tasmania to breed. That is an incredible journey when you think about a 45 gram bird. One of the key challenges for their conservation is that that rate of migration, so how many of those birds successfully complete that migration journey has actually been very low in the last decade or so and that has resulted in very few birds in the wild. So let's talk about birds in the wild. There's very few of them left. Largely, we, we monitor them over the breeding season, which would be summer, and that's in Tasmania. And, and what are the general threats that are facing them? So there's a range of really um, interesting and complex threats, but ultimately that reason for their decline is really unknown. So we know what sort of the symptoms are, but we don't necessarily know what those root causes are. So as I said, that return rate is um, significantly lower than it was historically. Right. And that's particularly true for juveniles that need to undertake that migration in their first year. So there's lots of theories about why that could be. So it could just be sort of loss of knowledge within the species. Parrots are very social, very smart. They learn from other birds and perhaps just because there are so few birds that knowledge isn't being shared appropriately. But there are other threats to the species. So potentially there is inappropriate fire regimes that mean that the natural food sources aren't as readily available. There are some potential competitors, other bird species that may interfere with their breeding success. And for any wild species, particularly one that is so small, there are always long-standing threats of inbreeding for those populations. So very little bird, big challenges, having to migrate long distances, all kinds of environmental threats. So what is the program at Healesville Sanctuary and, and how do we help contribute to looking after this bird? Our program at Healesville Sanctuary sits couched within a very large and very complex recovery team. And that's because the nature of the conservation of this bird is very large and complex. There's multiple states involved. There's a really extensive captive insurance program mm -hmm. um, where birds are bred each year at institutions across Australia and released to the wild every year. And so our role at Hillsville Sanctuary is one of those breeding programs. Each year we breed about 20 pairs of orange-bellied parrots and based on the number of juveniles that we produce, they are released at various times throughout the year to support that wild recovery. We often say that you don't save a species on your own. There's actually an enormous number of partners and it often starts with what you're talking about, a recovery team. So just give us a fair indication of who's on the recovery team. This recovery team is very big and very complex and there are a lot of people with decades of knowledge about orange-bellied parrots on the recovery team. So we have three state governments and the Commonwealth represented. There are representatives from all of the institutions that breed orange-bellied parrots as well as some other organisations that have particular interests with birds, so like BirdLife Australia for example. And there are also a number of subgroups. So we have 
an enormous uh, group of specialist veterinarians and other people who are specialists in bird health. There's a group of specialists in captive management of birds, as well as another group of researchers and um, field biologists who uh, help to coordinate all the activities. And another key contributor to that recovery team is the Friends of the orange Belly Parrot, who are a major assistance for that monitoring of birds. What a great example of how many different organisations can all contribute to the success. What are the quirky things that we've been able to do? Is there anything unusual about this program? So within the last, I'll say, five years or so, we've tried some really novel approaches to um, trying to increase that rate of migration of birds. So a couple of the things that we do that we've been involved with at Healesville Sanctuary are releases of juvenile birds as soon as they fledge from their parents, pretty much. So within about three weeks of leaving the nest, we want them released to the wild. And that's based on the principle that um, they might actually build stronger flight muscles. They might learn information from wild birds right when they're in that really peak learning phase of life. At the same time, one of the other things that we have done is what we call aided migration, where we know that some birds are not likely to have a great migration uh, for the winter. And so the strategy that's taken is some of those birds from the wild at the end of summer are caught and flown over to the mainland and housed at Werribee Open Range Zoo for the winter. Werribee is very close to where those birds, one of the places where they would naturally overwinter. So then at the end of winter, they're again flown back down to the breeding grounds. Um, and so that actually helps those birds to learn that this is where they should be going and also gives an opportunity to increase the number of birds in the breeding grounds in summer. There's another strategy that we also have done in recent years, which is trying to release birds onto the mainland where they naturally overwinter. And the thinking behind that, which is a really brilliant idea that's come from the recovery team and Zoos Victoria has been really heavily involved with, is that perhaps what's happening is that birds use a social cue to learn where to migrate to. So in theory, if we create a big flock of orange belly parrots on the mainland, then young naive birds who've made their first migration might be scanning along the coastline to say, where should I spend my time over winter? And if they get that cue from other orange belly parrots who are there, then that may be a signal to them that this is a safe place for me to have my winter. What are you optimistic about and what's your dreams for the species? I have felt incredibly optimistic, particularly in the last couple of years. When I started on this program six years ago, I think there were as few as 15 birds that returned to Tasmania for the summer breeding. We're now at a point that that number has pretty steadily increased over the last few years. And at the end of this uh, recent breeding season, there were more orange-bellied parrots that left for migration than have in the entire history of monitoring. So that is an incredible outcome. It shows the dedication of a huge number of organizations who are all working together, employing various different strategies to try to increase the number of birds. So I feel really optimistic about what we see in spring, how many of those birds actually return back to the breeding ground. Kim, thank you so much for sharing that story. It, it really is so wonderful to think that we can make a difference, that you can see in a few years just how that reinforces. And, and as you say, parrots are social. You can imagine how lost they would have felt when there were only 15 of them. But now that there's more and more, you'll start seeing these big flocks again. And it's just an incredible process. So thank you so much for all your hard work. And we look forward to reporting more successes each and every breeding season for these little orange-bellied parrots. Absolutely.